Adrian Alex Poe, and in this video we're going to continue to talk about how to properly format a screenplay in the most easiest possible way. Hey, that rhymed. <laughs> so we're going to focus in this video on um, master scene headings and what they are. And but before we get to that, let me just quickly mention how to number your screenplay. So on the first page, you never number the first page. Numbering starts on the second page in the upper right corner with the number two followed by a period. So on the first page, no numbers, start with the second page um, with two period and then you the next page is three period, four period, five period, so on and so on. On the first page, however, you do start with fade in because 99.9% .9 of screenplays start with fade in. Um, in the upper right corner, and it's all in caps, the word fade, space, and then in, followed by a colon. Now, let me talk about, um, just in case you don't start your screenplay with fade in, um, you may begin with a master scene heading. Some begin with, um, some screenplays begin with a black screen, which is followed by the description of sounds or some superimposed words or both, um, which is then followed by fade in. You will not need to use fade in again unless you fade to black later in your script, after which you will need to fade in again. That's getting a little too complicated. That's a whole separate video a long time from now. So normally you just start with fade in. You don't number the first page. You start on the second page and continue to number the pages. So now let's get into what this entire video is about. Master scene headings. What are they? Also known as slug lines. I'm sure you hear more often slug lines than master scene headings, or they're also called scene headings. But I um, always hear them being called slug lines. So where do you place them? Um, left margin uh, at 15 spaces or 1.5 inches from the left edge of the page. It's a um, one line description of the location and the time of day of a scene. There's three parts to them. Consists of um, camera location, which is exterior or interior, scene location, um, and time, basically day or night. Always, always appears in caps. Every word in the scene heading, in the slug line, all in caps. Make it short and specific. Here are some examples on the right side. So the three parts you can see, interior, office, day, exterior, street, morning, so on and so on. So let's get into the specifics of a slug line part one, which has to do with camera location, either exterior or interior. So always in caps, it's the location of the camera outside or the location of the camera inside. So for example, if the camera is located outside, then you use the abbreviation, all in caps C, X, T, period, for exterior. If the camera is located inside, then you use the abbreviation I, N, T, with a period, for interior. It's very simple. Now, a little bit more specific. If the action moves back and forth through a doorway or an opening, or if the scene begins outside, but then quickly moves inside or vice versa, then use the combination of the abbreviations um, INT period slash EXT period followed by the scene location. So let's take a look at some examples. You have starting with the top EXT period, so exterior um, outside Herbert's kitchen. So you're outside some guy's kitchen. Um, INT period interior abandoned mine. So you're inside some mine. Now let's talk about it. For example, let's take this with the nightclub. If the scene begins, if the camera is outside of the nightclub and you're, you know, the scene has to do with a bunch of friends or people standing outside on the sidewalk, waiting in line to get inside the club, then you start outside and then the bouncer lets them in and they walk inside. So it's 
ext period slash int period so you start it outside on the sidewalk they talk to the bouncer whatever they go inside and you know something happens inside so that's how you do a combination of both now in reverse which is also okay so if you're confused about well should i start with an outside and, and then go in or uh, if they're inside and then they go out same thing it's where the camera is located if you start it outside the club then it's outside ext if you're inside the club and someone's getting kicked out onto the street then just reverse it so you do interior um, slash exterior because someone is getting kicked out onto the sidewalk the most common um, used example is if you have a scene inside a car so in this case you know you have two friends or a couple driving inside the car and they're stopping at the stoplight or they're driving down the road and they're looking outside the window at what is happening outside so you start like interior slash exterior car so um, if like you have a couple or two people talking inside the car they get into an argument and they get out then that's what you do or if they're in the car and they're looking outside and then you cut to what they're looking outside like that or if they're for example getting out of the house they're standing in front of the car like outside of the car they're having an argument and then someone gets in the car and drives away then you can start it like that exterior slash interior or vice versa it's all good so part two of a slug line is scene location always in caps um, followed by a dash it's the place where everything is happening usually one or two words will be enough please don't overdo it don't be um, too specific but don't be too broad either that's where you know the creativity comes in and you got to figure out the best way to convey to the reader to the audience what the location is without saying too much but without saying too little so here's some examples um at starting with the top it's interior haunted house so you're inside a haunted house interior the evil dungeon you know i guess that could you know be considered good you know it's a little bit more specific but good enough um, or you could just say dungeon um, exterior spooky graveyard or you could just say you know exterior graveyard followed by a dash um, interior convenience store so it's letting you know that you're inside a small store because when you think of a convenience store it's small it's not big so it's not like you know a grocery store which is large um, or a, you know a uh, shopping mall which is gigantic see it's being specific without overdoing it it's like if you say um, interior classroom versus interior auditorium that implies that the classroom is much bigger as opposed to just saying classroom which you quickly think of you instantly think of just a regular class full of like 20 people as opposed to being a little bit more specific and saying auditorium which is like a college class that you you know think of where it's like 50 you know close to 100 people some more examples is exterior poolside bar see that's being specific without you know still giving you know within the bounds of not overdoing it you could just say exterior bar which is fine but they want it to be a little bit more specific so it's you could say beach bar so you know oh it's at the beach poolside bar like okay so it's it has a pool maybe the pool you know will come into the story later you know so they specifically made it poolside because maybe they're going to talk about a party maybe there's a dead guy in the pool but you know it's at a poolside bar now to talk about um this is very important of everything i mentioned of part two is don't be too specific or too broad here's an example where 
you're too broad. This is not good to do. Do not do this. So in this case, this slug line is exterior, New York City. So that is too broad. You can't just be that general and, you know, the scene is taking place somewhere, anywhere in New York City. It has to be a little bit more specific. So, for example, the proper way to write the scene location is exterior Central Park. So you instantly know it's New York City without saying New York City because you know Central Park is in New York City. And you know that, you know, you're not talking about all of New York City, just focusing on Central Park. Or if you could say, like, New York Cafe, that's okay, too. But don't just be that general and say, it's somewhere in Pennsylvania. It's somewhere on Earth. Um, interior Earth. Or exterior um, Pennsylvania. Or, you know what I'm saying? So, you got to be a little bit specific, but not too specific and not too broad. And finally, the last part, part three of a slug line, has to do with time of day. It's always in caps. Is the scene happening during the day or during the night? Um, here are some examples on the right. It's as simple as can be. It's uh, interior, Vince's trailer, uh, morning. Exterior, interior, location, number one, day. Interior, location, number one, night. Or interior, ballroom, evening. Now, to keep it as simple as possible, just stick with day and night. If you want to be a little bit more specific, I guess you can get away with saying morning and evening. But nothing more than that. And please avoid terms like dusk, dawn, late afternoon, early evening, high noon, that's too specific, and please never, ever, ever um, use a specific time on the clock. So, for example, example, never do like, you know, in interior location number one, three o'clock, or um, interior convenience store, five past two, or 5.30, never do that. Just keep it super simple with day and night. Thank you so much for listening. Please like and share this video. Comment down below. Give me some ideas of what other videos I could do. Or if you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer them about screenplay writing or writing in general. Hit me up on Facebook and Twitter. Please subscribe to help me grow the channel because I'm going to have a lot of videos coming out, especially in the next um, week, a video every single day. And hit the, the bell to get notifications. And remember my motto where story comes first.